All right, guys, today we're going to talk about a video or we're going to do a video that I think is a little bit uh, maybe contradictory, but I think a video that's worth like noting or really talking about is why I think American knife makers are still killing it. Now, I've made videos in the past of saying like why Chinese knives are dominating, uh, you know, the knife market and stuff like that. And we're going to get it a little bit into that too, because I think there's some other things that make Chinese knife makers more successful than American knife makers in the current EDC game. But I have a lot of different brands here to show you guys that I think are representative of non-mainstream US knife makers that are honestly doing a good job and if you don't know about these brands definitely check them out um, and ultimately you know this is like the reality to American knife the American knife scene as far as the makers go so first off I want to say that you know I think part of the large success for um, American or for Chinese knife makers realistically is their ability to dominate the eyes of most American knife consumers. And what I mean by this is undoubtedly if you look on places such as Instagram, YouTube, outside of my channel, um, and outside of like a handful of smaller channels, you are going to see a lot of, you know, these best techs, we Civivis. And don't get me wrong, there are a few Civivi models that I think I will probably add to my collection this year primarily the Gavco and gosh there's one other that I was thinking about adding I think it's the Snacks uh, Vision VR or something like that it's something along those lines it's, it's a vision typed knife that I liked quite a bit and so don't get me wrong they do have some good designs and stuff but undoubtedly you see like almost a polluting level of publicity when it comes to your larger knife channels. I'm not going to directly name out names, but you know, ones that are 50,000 subscribers and higher, you see pretty much every week, at least every week, these guys are pumping out content that's basically, you know, Civivi, Best Tech, you know, CRJB, um, any of these Chinese knife manufacturers, they send in a shipment of knives, you know, their latest and greatest of blades. And then you see these guys just talk about them, drool over them, say how good their actions are you know how nice they feel in the hand and it's like yeah there's a lot of good knives out there with good actions that feel good in the hands i mean the zt 05 or 450 sorry um is one of those that's very good it just happens to be usa made with a carbon fiber show scale and i think better than most of those chinese knives but you know it, there's a lot of good knives with good actions out there and there's nothing wrong with that per se but uh yeah i think ultimately like the biggest reason or one of the biggest reasons why chinese knife uh knives are really killing the market is because they are essentially like polluting the market and i'm not necessarily trying to be mean or critical to them but like i said it's very telling when you go to these very large youtube channels that make content daily and you just see video after video after video of these knife companies or of these knife tubers just pushing out chinese new drops and you know talking about them and granted like i said i don't think that all of them are necessarily you know even evil or that these knife tubers are doing bad you know they're just trying to make content like any other content creator it just so happens that theirs is pushing out chinese knives and saying a lot of good things about honestly most of the time i'd imagine probably okay knives like they're not horrible they're not going to be a waste of money but there are better options out there so anyways, that is, I think, one of the biggest reasons why Chinese knives are killing it. Now, there are quite a few brands in America right now that are doing a good job. ZT is one that I wish, honestly, more people would OEM with ZT. And I even throw it out there. It's really funny because you'll see, you know, uh, some knife tubers talk about, you know, like, man, why is ZT going the way of the dinosaur? And it's because no one, no designers, small or large, are wanting to collaborate with ZT. And I think that's partly for the large designers because ZT has kind of fallen off the face of the earth. But for the small designers, there's really no reason not to, if you want an American OEM to build your knives, to go with the ZT. Like, ZT is great. Um, they really do a good job at building quality knives. And I think the value levels that ZT offers most of the time with most of their designs is really there. Like, good quality components, good blade materials, good build design, and like overall quality is really there. However, 
ZT aside, there are some others. And the first one up for me is going to be Demco Knives. Now, this one in particular, full disclosure, is a Taiwanese-made blade. And so this one is not technically American, but Demco does produce a lot of knives made in America, including the 8020.5 in other flavors, aside from the OS 10 version, and the 8020 um, you know, is also out there as an American made knife. Now I will say this list, this list of knives I'm talking about or brands isn't necessarily the cheapest. Some of these are more expensive, you know, multiple hundreds of dollars, but some of these are more attainable and more affordable. The Demco knives 8020.5 is one of those that is more attainable. Even the US variants in CPM 3V tend to average about 150 bucks. So yeah, I mean, these things are not completely unattainable. Uh, blades at all. So that's the first one up. Uh, the next one up that's of a more attainable variety is going to be Hogue knives. Now I've talked a lot about Hogue knives so we will kind of uh, glaze over these guys but the Deca, the Ritter, uh, the, those are some solid blades. Of course, a lot of them feature the Able Lock, which is Hogue's um, Axis, you know, variety uh, lock. And so it is a solid blade. You know, there's no blade play. It's a good performer. They use Magna Cut steel. And this deck is an absolute beast. It is a slicey little blade. So, yeah, I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this deck. Um, you know, these are solid knives. And so definitely Hogue is another one worth checking out. Now, the next one up on the list, unfortunately for me, at least in my opinion. So the next one up is Emerson. And uh, we'll talk about this knife just a little bit. Um, but unfortunately, I think the biggest disadvantage with Emerson is they've really pigeonholed themselves uh, as far as attainability goes nowadays, because unfortunately, Emerson has decided to discontinue working with every um, retailer. So they don't work with Blade HQ. They don't work with Knife Center. They don't work with anyone. They just are themselves, which partly is a blessing and partly is a curse. And the reason why I say that is that it means that their knives are reasonably priced for what they are, at least so long as you're okay with 154 CM, which is honestly a just fine steel. Like it's, if people try to hype up or say that, you know, like 154 CM is garbage steel. Like honestly, it's a really solid performing steel. Um, but anyways, so, you know, so long as you're okay with 154 CM, these knives are just fine as far as performance goes. It's it's just that they are really like you can only get them from Emerson when they sell out they sell out they do make more um, this one in particular is the Emerson Ensar so this is a rescue oriented blade designed for the Navy but uh, you know there are obviously more EDC friendly options I have things like the mini commander the horseman and they still make things like the CQC 7 and all those kinds of blades so honestly Emerson is a really good option I wish I could recommend them more but like I said I'm Unfortunately, like they kind of have pigeonholed themselves into this way where they only make and sell on their specific site. So you have to go to Emerson unless you're, you know, buying it off the secondary, which then you have to pay secondary prices. So it's not necessarily the greatest, but, uh, yeah, so that is Emerson. Unfortunately, I do wish they would work with retailers. And I feel like their lack of willingness to work with retailers also hurts them in the way that, um, like they're not working out special collaborations like we'll see in a little bit with some of the knives on this list that are still from American makers. You know, they are special editions for different knife retailers. So anyways, Emerson is out there. They've been out for a very long time. I definitely recommend don't forget them as a knife maker. Um, they do make some very solid EDC friendly tools. All right, next one up is Tour or Tor or however you want to pronounce that. Now, Tor had a bit of, at least in my opinion, a rocky start. Their original Merchant 1.0 folders were pretty sketchy as far as quality controls goes or as far as quality control goes. There was a lot of like lock rock or there were centering issues, but this is a Tour with them. Ah. This is a Tour Chasm Widow, and this is a Smoking Mountain Knife Works exclusive, the Widow version with this G10 kind of cool textured handle. But uh, the Chasm as a whole is one of uh, Tour's like lineup of folding knives. They also still make the Merchant 2.0. And as far as their new knives go, they are very good. 
solid actions, hard deploying, um, really nice blades. I do like the Chasm a little bit more than the Merchant because of that really nice Tonto blade to it. And I do know that they make Tonto Merchants. Those are not necessarily bad. But yeah, these tours are really cool. And uh, like I said, so long as you stay away from like the initial first like generation Merchants and stuff, their quality is there. I mean, there's no issues with it. Like I said, blade centering's good. Everything's good on um, the later variant tours that I've come across. So this is a solid blade offering. And the other cool thing that I like personally about tour is the fact that their pricing is reasonable. Even MSRP is pretty darn good. You can find chasms. The special edition's a little bit more expensive, but you can find chasms for, you know, about $175. So not still not super cheap, but if you think about it, like in the grand scheme of things, this is an American-made titanium frame lock that is about the same size as a um as a small Sabenza 21 or 31 now, I guess I should say. And so ultimately like the price range for that and like the Hinder XM18 three inch, which is another very comparably sized blade, like this guy right here is like $375. This guy is like $175. So you can see they're pretty darn close in size and you know, like overall use, um, like POU philosophy of use. So ultimately when it comes down to it, like $175 really isn't too shabby for this guy. They come in CPM 154 or one CPM 154. Keep wanting to say 154 CM, but CPM 154. So that is the Tour Chasm. All right, next one up, and probably one of my favorites to drool over in the collection is Heretic Knives. This is a Manticore X. Hopefully I can show this to you guys right. Uh, so this is a Manticore X. Now, of course, mine is a limited edition Bounty Hunter model that is obviously designed off of Boba Fett's uh, kind of styling and colors from Star Wars. But the Manticore X as a whole is one that I wanted to add to the list because as far as OTFs go, um, I will say this as a quick note, like the limited editions like this one do go for a lot of money. This is like a, at least a $600 knife, um, if not more than that now that you can't buy them anymore, like you can't buy them new. They're all kind of uh, been gobbled up by collectors like myself. But anyways, the normal Manticore E's and X's go for actually pretty reasonable prices prices, you can find them for right around $200. You know, obviously sometimes depending on the variant a little bit more, but your normal Manticore E's and X's go for pretty reasonable prices. So this guy does use MagnaCut for its blade steel, but um, yeah, so like honestly, these are pretty darn solid, well-built knives. And I would argue to say that they are better than Ultratex, but that is just my opinion. I feel like they fire a little bit harder and uh, yeah. But anyways, so Heretic Knives, as far as it goes, is a knife company worth checking out. And because they are not as popular or as mainstream as people like Microtech, oftentimes their blades, whether it's fixed blades, OTFs, automatics, are oftentimes going for well below what a Microtech would go for. So definitely still quite affordable and really worth, honestly, and really worth, honestly, like checking out. So Anyways, next one up is going to be TRM, and this is a TRM Neutron 2. And the Neutron is a really cool blade as a whole. Um, and TRM, I think, is a, one of those really cool companies. Once again, I think they are uh, definitely trying to offer a lot of value. They do have higher end models, and it's very contingent largely on the handle options you go for. But for the most part, their Atom and Neutron blades are very reasonably priced, about $160 to $175, especially on the secondary. And there is also a load of customizations you can do to these. If you are a fan of something like the Nafsco Lander, this is a blade that you're probably really going to like because you can change out the handles um, either on the Atom or the Neutron. They make dozens of different types of materials, colors uh, for the handle options. In addition to the um, thumb studs up here are actually um, 
They're like machined in a way that you can buy O-rings for them either from factory or aftermarket. You can buy different colored O-rings and stick them into these thumb studs so that you can have a larger or enlarged kind of more grippy um, thumb stud to open the blade with. So there are those features. It is also a really well made blade. You guys can see once again, another one that is absolutely buttery smooth uh, in action and of course flies out uh, when deployed. So this guy is in 20 CV, um, which once again, you'd expect nothing less, best materials. Um, it is really good in TRM as far as a company goes, is really good. All right, last one up and the newest one to my collection for American made knives is going to be McNeese. Now, once again, this is not a super cheap company. Uh, you can expect to pay, you know, $400, $500 for these blades. But once again, you are also expecting um, or you should be expecting, you know, um, Chris Reeve levels of machining tolerances and quality overall. Now, I will say this is the Mac 2 by McNeese. I'm not the largest fan of the Mac 2 or McNeese as a whole as far as design goes. Like, they are really solidly built knives. Don't let me, you know... Uh, dissuade you if you like the design the style like the action on this guy is buttery smooth like just look at this thing it is freaking crazy it will close on its own it is insane uh, the action is amazing the lockups amazing everything like this is a precision machined piece of blade but uh, yeah so even though I'm not the largest fan of the personal design and like overall shape of it it is a really well-built knife and once again i think a very good example of what american machining can do and honestly like i said you can find these knives like with china becoming or pushing into more expensive blades you can find these knives out there um, for comparable prices to some of your higher end like riots um Wii's. so th they are out there they they are a good solid competitor like these McNeese are really solidly built blades so another solid USA made company anyways guys that about wraps it up for why I think genuinely for the most part like honestly speaking American made blades are really good there are still companies out there in the US that are making solid blades that you should definitely check out Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.